Hello and thank you for tuning in to another TechView video. In this video, we're going to take an honest look at Starlink and give you all the up-to-date facts. Also, stick around to the end if you're interested in seeing the speed tests. As always, if you're a fan of technology and Starlink, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Okay, so firstly, what is Starlink? Well, Starlink is a satellite internet constellation operated by SpaceX. And I'm sure you've all heard of SpaceX and Elon Musk, of course. And if you'd like to see more videos from me about SpaceX, then let me know in the comments below. Currently, Starlink is in the beta phase, which is the testing phase. But this is soon to be moved into full operational phase in October. So SpaceX started launching satellites into low Earth orbit back in May 2019. The end goal is to have around 42,000 satellites up there, but that's a couple of years off. And currently there's about 1,800 satellites up in space and low Earth orbit. And about 1,600 of them are currently operational. So how does this work? Okay, so basically, and I mean really basically, the user, i.e. me, has a dish. This sits on their property. This will send up signals to a non-geo satellite. What a non-geo satellite is, is a satellite that's constantly moving through low Earth orbit. And this is why there has to be so many of them up there to connect to your dish. This, in turn, will send a signal either to another satellite or down to a base station located on the Earth. And these are called terrestrial internet exchanges, and this is where they connect to the internet. Currently, Starlink can turn out about 5,000 user terminals or dishes per week. And currently, there's a backlog of 60,000 orders, so it might be some time before you get yours. This is largely due to the shortage of chips, which we're all hearing about everywhere for everything. Now, there are rumours that there's going to be a newer terminal, so a newer dish, and the rumours are that this isn't actually going to be a round dish, it's actually going to be square or oblong. So it'd be interesting to see what they're going to call that. Um, however, this isn't in production yet, that we know of. So don't expect any rollout anytime soon. But when it does come out, it's likely to be cheaper. Whether Starlink will pass on the savings to the user is unknown, as they will still be making a loss on these dishes. Speaking of which, a user has to buy one of these dishes for about £499 in the UK. However, that's not too bad considering it costs SpaceX £2,500 to build. Another great fact is Starlink has currently got filed with the FCC for testing purposes on aircraft and vessels. This means that if you're on a ferry or a cruise ship or even better on a plane, you're going to get high speed internet if this goes ahead. On a plane. The latest exciting news is that last week on the 13th of September SpaceX launched 51 of the new 1.5 generation Starlink satellites. Now these are the new laser satellites. So this is going to be creating the new backbone that talks from one satellite to another. This is greatly going to improve the latency and as we all know, latency is one of the main issues that we're facing at the moment. It's not going to stop you from wanting to get Starlink. However, if you're a massive gamer, then it might not be for you. But hey, this is meant for people that have no signal or really have really slow speeds. And what Starlink are claiming these new laser satellites will mean is once the constellation is whole, this is going to be the fastest way to transfer data from one side of the planet to the other. I mean, that's just amazing. In fact, they're saying that this is going to be faster than fibre to the property once the constellation is whole. Amazing. In terms of issues using any services, things like Teams for work and FaceTime, absolutely no issues whatsoever and streaming services like netflix and prime absolutely fantastic 4k streaming straight off the bat no fluctuation in the quality absolutely fantastic the only issues that i've had 
and there are reports of other people having a similar issue uh, with social media. Uh, I don't use Facebook at the moment, but people have been reporting that Facebook feeds just will not load. I have seen this issue with Instagram, and while the feeds do load on Instagram, they can be extremely slow, um, and some of the videos don't always play fully. Um, no issues, however, on Twitter for me, so it's, it's a bit of a hit and miss at the moment. Like I say, we're in beta, so there are going to be these small issues, but I think they're going to get ironed out pretty soon. In fact, the issues I've been seeing with Instagram have been improving significantly over the last few weeks. So they tend to try and iron out these issues pretty quick. So if you've been following my channel on YouTube, firstly, thank you very much. And you will probably know that I've been using Starlink for about three months now, and I can say it has been a game changer. In fact, two months of those has been my primary internet provider. And I can honestly say it hasn't really let me down, no more so than my old provider. But I'm not gonna sit here and say that the speeds are always fantastic because they're not. I mean, don't get me wrong, they are good speeds, <laughs> but I saw it top 300 once, maybe, and I know they're not even saying that they're offering up to those kinds of speeds, but it is capable of them, but it's just not consistent. But what is consistent is the speed is 99% over 100 meg download speeds all of the time. I have noticed over the last month, however, with the beta updates that the upload speed has changed significantly. So now on average, I would probably say I'm getting around 10 meg up. It does go up to about 20 and occasionally 30 meg, but on average around 10 meg. So who knows, maybe it's as they're testing the system out, they're going to level out the speed so it's more consistent if somewhat slower but when I say slow compared to what I was getting before and compared to what um, BT and other providers can offer me it is significantly more so I'm not complaining but I think as we see more people join the network I think the speeds are going to get a bit lower just so it stays a little bit more consistent but another caveat to that is these new laser satellites. Maybe they're gonna be a game changer and maybe the speeds will just go up exponentially. Who knows, I can't wait to see. That is it for now. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please check out my other videos on Starlink.